and Eden and wow. Pat. We've got some new names here. This is awesome. This is awesome. And listen, if you guys uh, feel like it, uh, I, we got to jam pack this thing full of information yes. to keep you healthy. But if you have a personal Facebook page or even a, a fan page or something, if you want to share this, that would be um, we can awesome. get more people on here because the stuff we're going to share has been doctor approved by multiple doctors and, and nurses. And several nurses by tons of medical people. And it's going to be stuff that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Right. It's not, are... not necessarily secret stuff. It may be stuff that people have forgotten or just never knew about. And hi, Teresa. This is on um... YouTube. And watch out because this kitty has claws. That's her name. <laughs> That's hilarious. One cold for you, but not bad. Teresa, you're going to get over anything and keep yes. from getting sick if you do what we We've got share some today. great medical things for tonight, from hospital stays to doctor's visits to prescription drugs, durable medical equipment, dental care, curing a cold. We have some great topics for tonight. So make sure you kind of tag some folks um, and let them know to tune in. Um, there's some good things we're going to be talking about here. Well, the clock is chiming. All 7 right. o'clock. It is time to go live. Here we are. Another Friday night in Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> we're both pretty much healthy um, because we've been doing all the things we're going to share. We have. Tonight. We have been. I oh got a cold God. the second week <clears throat> in January and you got the flu New the Year's, week between Christmas and New yeah, Year's. Two days so. before New Year's, but... <clears throat> by applying the stuff we're talking about today, I was I was not feeling good New Year's Eve day, and I kept laying down for naps, but I kept taking the pills and everything mm. and, and using some of the stuff we're going to talk about. And by about 4 o'clock New Year's Eve night, I was up and I stayed up till midnight and, and actually one or, one or two well. o'clock in the morning, and uh, we did fine. So this stuff yes. really works, and we're going to cure colds in a day or two, and everybody's going to be happy and... <clears throat> be able to work too much and get sick again. So it's maybe. Thing. So medical. Wait, hold on. What? Who are you? Who am I? I'm Annette. And, and who I'm are Steve. you? And, and our last name is Economitas. And that's really our last name. And, and we means... run the website. Oh, go ahead. And our last name is really Economitas. We never changed it. Um, probably should have. We should have been Smith or something like that. But it means son of the steward in Greek. And so our our purpose in life is to help people steward what they've been given, whether it's your health, your money, um, your time, um, your abilities. <clears throat> We're all about finding ways to make what you have go further, help more people, and do more. Yes. And we run the website, moneysmartfamily.com. And I would say that we're frugal living experts because we, like Steve said, we like to show you how you can make the money that you earn go further. And we talk about everything from groceries to household finances to kids and money, utilities, cars, um, oh my gosh, crafts, holidays, you name it, furniture. Um, we've we, talked about <clears throat> everything. Right. And we, we, we don't really often pay retail for things. Right. And if that means we uh, buy something at Goodwill and refinish it, we do that. Uh, we'll look for sales. We'll buy stuff used on Craigslist and offer up. But everything we do, we try and get the best quality there is. Yes. We don't buy junk. Um, we buy good quality stuff. And some people call us cheap. Um, we like the idea of being smart, money smart. And that's what we're all about. But yes. today <clears throat> we're going to talk, this is part two, uh, of how to that's deal right. with your medical coverages and expenses without getting sick. Now, right. medical costs are, are going through the roof, but if you... <clears throat> can find ways to get what you need medically less expensively or in an alternative method, you can really save some money and, and, and even reduce your insurance premiums by being healthy. Yes, and last week we actually talked about, it was medical stuff part one, and we talked about understanding your insurance, your co-pays, your deductibles, um, tax advantage accounts like HSAs and FSAs, um, resolving medical claims. Oh, you want to know that one and, if you have somebody hounding you for money. And 10 ways to just keep your body healthy. So um, if tonight's show doesn't answer all your questions, you may want to go back and find medical part one because that would be something that would really probably give you a better rounded picture 
and um, help you deal with some of the medical stuff in your life. Okay, so we're going to start with hospital stays, and we're going to introduce some things that maybe mm. you have never thought about before. And it can be kind of crazy if you've got kids at home, but um, Annette's mom and dad, my mom and dad, have been in and out of the hospital quite a bit. My mom has heart issues, and my, ad, my dad has had issues with kidney stones. So what we decided to do with my brothers and sisters was – try to run shifts around the clock at the hospital so that they were not alone because when they were real sick, they couldn't even understand what the medical staff was saying to them. So these so, are our rules for hospital stays. If, if they can at all be done. So nobody stays alone. Ever. Right. So, uh, so there was a time my dad was visiting from Chicago. Right. And he got really sick. He was low on potassium. Or his no, blood pressure his dropped. High, no, he had high high potassium. potassium poisoning. And... and we took him to the hospital. We took him to the hospital, and I slept in the second bed or the the couch, and just watched. And we keep a log, and that's okay. So a is. notebook is the other thing. Make sure you have one of those spiral bound notebooks that you can get for fifteen or twenty five cents during the back to school thing. Always ha back to school sales. Always have some of those in your house. And we went. We had a notebook on my mom and my dad, and. We would just take notes. So we kept who, the notebook who, in the room, whoever right. was in the room. And, we, you know, <clears throat> you recorded each day, put a date for each day, and then jotted down the time and who it was that came in and what they were doing. Taking blood work, administering <clears throat> medicines. You asked them what medicines they were administering. And then we all just took shifts. So you and, try and do it, try and be thorough, but you're also very diplomatic and kind because these people are the nurses and... and uh, Physicians assistants and um, orderlies or whatever they call them. No. You know, they're all trying to do their job. The people who come in and take your blood pressure, they're right. nurses. Right. Um, but you also want them to know that you're watching. And sometimes they can be a little intimidated. So right. try and strike up a conversation with them. But eventually they'll get used to the idea of you being in there and they'll say, hey, my name's Sammy and I'm just here to take blood pressure. Or I'm yeah, Joanne definitely. and I'm here to right. administer pills and this is what we're giving. And if you're friendly with them, they're going to volunteer the information. They like, yes. they really like it to know when they know that family is involved, right? Um, because they know that the patient's going to get better care, and they're going to get actually. Sometimes though, it does tick off the staff. It does. It can. But don't stop <clears throat> asking questions and try to be there. Make sure somebody is there at the very least when the doctors make their rounds. So if somebody, if you can't mm. spend all night with your your parent or whoever's sick. Try to get there by 6 in the morning because most doctors will make their rounds somewhere between 6 and 10 a.m. And, you know, a lot of times my mom and dad would have three different doctors for different things. Like my dad would have a kidney doctor and a urologist. So a nephrologist, a urologist. He at one point had some a cancer doctor. And then my mom had her heart doctor and then she had an intestine doctor. And I forget the endo, endocrinologist and, and then the GP. So... Make sure you're All there. All these ologists. Now, there was a time, <clears throat> remember, hospitals make a lot of their money by running tests. Even if they don't think you absolutely need the test, they get paid if they run tests. So a lot of times they will do tests on a patient that don't really need to be done, especially if they've been in recently and had it or you mm. know it would be harmful to their body. Well, when well you have two instances. But yeah, one of them when is, is if you know your parents or somebody's history, and you know they've had a certain type of scan in the last five or six months. Sometimes the doctors don't look at all that information or, or it's not in the chart. And so, again, you have to be diplomatic because some doctors think that they don't need your help. Um, but just tell them. And sometimes you have to put your foot down. And then there are some right. instances where tests aren't good for right. the patient. And when Steve's dad was <clears throat> in the hospital um, in kidney <clears throat> failure, they wanted to do a test where they put dye in his kidneys to, to test them. And I said, are you kidding me? Because using dye will da can damage the kidney. And when someone is in kidney failure, you do not do the dye. You just do the test without the dye. And I had to go to bat for my dad on that too, because he's had kidney issues. No, you don't do the dye. And I forget what it's called. There's a mm -hmm. name for it, but um, it's a fancy name. And, and, you know, there was a time when the doctors were ordering so many tests for, I think it was my dad. Mm -hmm. And I, and there was a nurse in the room at the time and the doctor came in, it was a hospital doctor. Yeah, they're, they're, called, they're, 
They're called hospitalists, and basically they are subcontractors to the hospital. Usually there'll be a group of doctors that agree to staff the hospital right. doctors. So actually now in a lot of the bigger cities and the bigger hospitals, the GPs can't go in. So basically what it is is you get assigned a hospital doctor. Uh, you, your specialists can come in, but the hospital doctor runs the show. And and this hospital doctor was just relentless with tests that they were ordering. And finally, I looked at the hospital doctor and I said, we are not doing that test. And I can't remember now what test it was and why they wanted it, but it was ridiculous that they were doing that test. And it could have been a kidney a mm-hmm. kidney test with a dye on my dad. And I said, no, you're not. And I, and I finally, and then the doctor got all defensive and just tried to defend their position. I said, you're not even reading the whole health history on my father. And so finally I looked at the hospital doctor and I said, you're fired. She said, what? I said, you're fired. Did you know you can ha- fire a hospital doctor? You have to be really aware of what's going on, but you can fire a hospital doctor. And when the hospital doctor left, the nurse said to me, you have a right to refuse any, any um, procedure that they want to do mm-hmm. on you. And, and a, um, few, a few hours later, the director of the hospital came down and talked to us. And, uh, it was the head of patient care right, or something. Right, right. And she came and, you know, she was like, oh, is everything okay? I said, no, everything is not okay. And I, She said, is everything okie dokie? And you said... Everything's it's, inky stinky. Yeah, and I was like, not, not in, not, <clears throat> not a chance. And so I went over everything with her, and um, they actually had difficulty finding another doctor who would take us because they knew that we were watching very, very carefully. They did find one, but um, the goal then became to get my dad out of there as quickly as possible. Oh <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about that was our rules for hospital stays. The next thing we're going to talk about is getting the most from your doctor visits, and. Um, Did you know you can interview doctors? When you're looking for a doctor, you can actually interview them. Ask them if you can have 10 minutes of their time, go in with a list of questions, and and interview them. I did that when I had to find an OBGYN to deliver Abby because the one that I had used for um, John and Becky had retired. And they were all fine about giving me 10 or 15 minutes to interview them. Also, you know, and the way I even came up with the five to interview was I called all of my friends. I probably called... 10 or 15 people and said, who do you use and why? So don't just necessarily go with whatever doctor's on your plan. Um, try to find um, a doctor that you're really going to be um, um, thrilled about, that you've done some research on. Also, be nice to the staff. When you find a practice that you really, really like, make sure you bring a treat at the holidays, if at all possible, or or whenever Just you're random, able, random acts even of in the summertime, maybe if you've got downtime <clears throat> in the summertime with the kids, bake some treats for the nurse and the doctor and the office manager and take it to the office. Um, those people very rarely get thank yous and that, or a plate of cookies or something with your kids. It would be pretty awesome. Also, bring a canvas bag with you. I should have Why one in my hand. bring a canvas bag for the doctor? When office. you go, like when we <clears throat> went to the pediatrician <clears throat> for years, um, <clears throat> I would always bring a canvas bag. And the reason I brought a canvas bag is because pediatricians are courted by pharmaceutical companies for tons and tons and tons of samples so that the pediatricians will promote it. And every time I would go in, because when we first adopted Joe, he had terrible asthma. He was probably allergic to a lot of the stuff I gave him. And it took a while for his body to adjust. And so I would be going into the office for all different things. And I'd bring my canvas bag and the nurse knew me. She'd go to the sample closet. She'd put things like Tylenol, liquid Tylenol, cough syrup, um, uh, rash lotion, lotion for rashes. They even gave me bar soaps one time. Um, It all depends on what sales reps have visited recently and how full their supply closet is. Right. I will tell you this. I don't know if it's changed, but I did not have to buy over-the-counter stuff for the kids, medicines, for years because we were in at the pediatrician and she was filling my my canvas bag each time I went in. Okay, now another way to use that same prescription closet or the the drug closet is if a doctor is prescribing... Oh, I got to go grab something. Hold on, you keep talking. If a doctor is prescribing a a medication for you, let's say it's an antibiotic, and uh, it's going to be, you're, you're not feeling good, and it's going to be hard for you to get to the, to the pharmacy right away. Or if it's, 
uh, even a blood pressure medication or uh, something like that, most doctors have some of those samples yes. in their supply closet. And so we've had our doctor say, look, I want you to start this. I want you to do it for five days, 10 days, whatever it is. I'm going to give you the first days now and then go pick up the rest afterwards and I'll adjust the prescription accordingly. It saves a little bit of money, but it really saves time when you're not feeling good. So if your doctor right. can do that, it's a wonderful little thing to ask. There for. is a book out there, Love, Medicine, and Miracles. You can check it out of your library by Bernie Sing Siegel. And he said that the patients that got well the best and fastest were the ones that were a pain in the butt and asked lots of questions and wanted to become educated about whatever sickness they were dealing with. Um, another resource that we use and actually is this prescription for nutritional healing. Oh, I gotta give you a link on that. One. Yeah, I don't know. This is the third edition. They're probably on the fourth or fifth or sixth edition at this point. But man, I spent so much time in this book when the kids were growing up. It is so worth it because it talks about common ailments in your home, um, uh, things that may be due to nutritional deficiencies and how to deal with them uh, by uh, in very healthy, natural ways with herbs and vitamins. It, every it's, it's home. It's not strictly herbs and vitamins. No, it, it's also other supplements. very balanced. Uh, yes, it is very balanced. And I really recommend that every household in America have this book. I have bought it for each of our kids as they've left home and got married so that they had one in their house. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a link up to that. Uh, this link is an affiliate link. In other words, if you purchase this book through our link, we make a little bit of money. It's right. for Amazon. Your price doesn't change, but we do have to disclose that. Right. Okay. And I would say that... Doctors will, if there's any doctors watching or your any doctor families, they'll be the first ones to admit they're not God. They're making their best <clears throat> guess. Or their, or their spouse will admit that. Yeah. So don't be afraid to get second opinions. Um, consider alternatives like uh, chiropractors, naturopathic doctors. Make sure you're well-rounded. I'm not saying give up on GPs, but make sure that you're well-rounded. My father almost died because a GP was convinced to give him this thyroid medicine called Synthroid, and Steve did research on it and found out that it is <clears throat> it can be lethal to men over 70. Well, they did give it to him. And they and did. all of a sudden, within a week's time, he was it, stumbling. No, he was it took longer than speech, that, but it was And the bad. only thing that had changed was this thyroid medication. And by the time we finally got him in for a blood test, uh, this man who had been a, a college athlete and, and an engineer, an electrical a, engineer. Amazing guy. Was his blood sugar, which he'd never had problems with, yes. his blood sugar was up over 800. Yeah, it was crazy. He should have been in a coma and he was cracking jokes with the medical staff. Okay, just to wrap it up, let's take a break before we move on. Steve's mm -hmm. going to talk about prescription drugs next. Let's address some of these things because okay. you guys have really made some great comments. So let's, let's talk about some of this. Okay. Um, Teresa says, every year my husband's insurance tells us we've got to have a wellness check to determine how much his insurance will be. Oh, I've not heard of that. But wellness checks are very good. You should definitely do that. I, I've, and some I've, businesses um, give you, if they have a flex spending account, they'll give you a discount if you go in and have your blood pressure taken, if you work out so many days a week, or if you go in for different wellness yes. checks or educational classes. Um Teresa says, this, since she was three months old, she's had 75 surgeries. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. She is a medical expert. Yes. I'm so sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you shared. Um, yeah, look up the side effects of medications that hospitals are trying to give you. Very, this very good. It is a wonderful tool Andrea, to yes. be able to do that. Yeah, we brought our laptop to the hospital and checked everything. Well, there was a time. Tell them the Texas story when John was sick. Oh, well, no, because that comes in here. We're, we're okay, so hold on. Later. Let's finish answering questions because you, you guys are making some great comments. Okay. Once my husband was in the hospital and I was in the room and a nurse came in the room and almost gave him the med he was allergic to, but I asked before she gave him the med. Unbelievable. Advocate, Good job. Advocate. Okay. Let's see. Do natural. Don't take shots. Yeah. Don't do the flu shot. If you haven't already done it, don't do it. It's really not helpful. Okay. Let's see. What else? Yeah, no on the Synthroid. Okay, check Facebook and we'll, we'll make some 
Just we'll kind of respond to, we're bouncing back and forth here between YouTube and Facebook, and we're just so happy to have all of you. Okay, let's see. Well, um, no real questions here on Facebook, but I'm so glad you guys are tuned in. But please give us you know, yeah, yeah. Know your experience with hospitals and ways that you found to get your family and loved ones through the hospital faster, healthier, and without getting wrong medication. Because, <clears throat> look, the hospital staff, they're really, most of them are wonderful, caring people. Yes. But sometimes things get messed up. Uh, it's either because they're they're working 12-hour days well, yeah, or just the because 12 the hour charts shifts. aren't right. If you're at the end of that 12-hour shift or, and it's been a busy, busy day at the hospital, that they just may not be as careful as they should be. So you ha you are your best <clears throat> advocate for your family member and for yourself. Right. Okay. All right. So let, Steve's going to talk about prescription drugs. We realize that, look, out of all the people that are watching now, several hundred, um, there are half of us are regularly taking prescription drugs. It's a big business. It helps us live longer, but it also, also can be very expensive. So we avoid drugs, if at all possible, by exercising. I was prescribed a cholesterol drug mm -hmm. several years ago. And I fought it for, for years. I tried red rice yeast. I tried niacin. Diet, exercise niacin. <laughs> we went into one meeting oh, with a producer never once. never mind. And I'd taken niacin, and it was the, the flushing kind. I yes. Just, oh, man. I was Ooh, carrying we sunshine with gonna me. We thought you were going to combust any minute. <laughs> My face okay. turned red. Anyway. I tried all that. Finally, it didn't. It didn't work well enough. My my um, cholesterol had risen up over like two hundred and sixty. So the doctor finally said, "Okay, we're going to give you sinvastatin." Yes. <clears throat> and within three or four months, I had the worst muscle cramps in my legs. I had knots. I went to a massage therapist to get rid of them. It was terrible. So I stopped taking the synthroid, and it took four or five years to get rid of the knots, uh, and by working out, losing weight, and changing my diet a little bit, my cholesterol is back down to normal. Oh, right it now. dropped like crazy. And yeah. I think actually that has a lot to do with oatmeal. Oatmeal can mm -hmm. drop cholesterol. And um, uh, you did diatomaceous. No, no, what was the the other pill you did? NOS. NOS. Nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. I, w I watched a, a video on... Um, Forks over knives. Yes. And they talked about the benefits of nitrous o NOS, nitrous oxide, and I started taking that. And, and your, your cholesterol is now at like 180. It's yeah. crazy. It's the lowest yeah. it's ever been. Okay. So if you do have a prescription drug and you're trying to save money on it, see if your doctor can prescribe a three-month dose. You'll pay the same basic copay, but get three times as many pills can save you money. Um, Obviously, ask for generics, if at all possible. Now, most um, medical insurance has two or three levels of prescription drugs. And uh, obviously, the cheapest is going to be the, the generic. generic. And then there's a tier two and a tier three. So it, a lot of times, remember that doctors are human. And if a drug, a pharmacy rep comes in and says, this is the greatest new drug for treating Pneumonia. Uh, of course, it is the greatest new one, in their opinion. It's also the greatest, most expensive one in the insurance's eyes. And there could be other drugs that are just as good. Unfortunately, because um, antibiotics and things like that have been over-prescribed, in, in, from what we've been reading, um, we have developed some resistances to them, so doctors are left with having to prescribe the new ones. But if you haven't taken a lot of, of antibiotics, Ask him to prescribe something that's less expensive and just as effective. So I'll tell the John story. We were in Texas one time on vacation, and all the kids got sick. And our oldest son, John, got really sick. So sick that I, we felt like we had to go to the doctor. So we took him mm -hmm. to the doctor there. And the doctor wanted to prescribe one of the newest uh, medicines, antibiotics out there. And it was going to cost 100 to $150. Mm -hmm. And Steve had taken him. I stayed at the house we, where we were. Our kids were pretty young at the time. They were. And <clears throat> Steve called me, and I said, no. I said, it's an upper respiratory infection type thing. We don't know exactly what it is. Um, ask for, and I knew about this, ask for erythromycin. It is a... Um, Broad spectrum. It, no, it's a specific drug for upper respiratory. <clears throat> and it's a very yeah. old antibiotic. It's been around for a long, long time. And so Steve went back to the doctor and said, could you please prescribe 
erythromycin? Do you think that would work in this situation? He said, yes, it would. Okay, I can prescribe that. That costs $15 instead of $150. So I know there's times when you have to take an expensive medicine, but do research and find out, do you really need to do that? Or can you go back and have a basic knowledge of stuff and ask for something else? Okay, there are things... Another way to save on drugs is if you have a chronic condition that's going to require medication for the rest of your life or for a long time, uh, there are things, each, each drug manufacturer has what's called a patient assistance program, PAP. And you can, if, if you find out who the drug manufacturer is, contact the patient assistance program uh, person and you'll have to fill out paperwork and you probably have to fill it out every three to six months with your... Uh, income uh, verification and your physical needs and a doctor will have to sign it and sometimes doctors will send these in but a lot of times you can get the medications for free or it greatly reduce prices. Uh, also if you're if you're dealing with a chronic illness like diabetes or let's say hemophilia which is the most expensive uh, blood disorder to treat uh, we've spoken at a couple of hemophilia association meetings so we know a little bit about this contact the National Association and they'll either hook you up with the with the patient assistance program or they'll be able to give you information about ways to get what you need less expensively. So uh, whether it's the Diabetes Association, Hemophilia Association, Heart Association, right. check with those groups first yes. to see if you can get cost to free. Right. We've already talked about samples, asking mm -hmm. for samples. If um, it's a new <clears throat> prescription and it's, let's say, let's say you've been um, diagnosed with cholesterol, high cholesterol. And that's pretty common, so there's not going to be a lot of side effects, but everybody's body responds differently to medication. So rather than asking the doctor initially to prescribe a three-month um, prescription, ask for a sample or enough to use just for a few days to test to see if your body's going yes. to react adversely to the prescription. If it doesn't, then buy the longer-term prescription. But that way you haven't spent all this money or have to waste the medication. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and expiration dates don't wig out about that, especially if it's a solid form pill. Um, expiration dates just mean that the pill becomes less potent. It doesn't become toxic. It becomes less potent. So there was a study done by the um, U.S. military on prescription drugs that were many years old and past expiration, and they determined that they lost somewhere between 5 and 17% of their effectiveness each year. Now, that means that you're going to have to take a little more, but these are solid pills, like Annette said. And we have a friend who's a doctor in a foreign country. He runs a medical clinic there. It's a, it's a missions base. And he, until the rules changed a few years ago, he would regularly come to the U.S. every few years and go to the pharmaceutical companies and take back medications that were either almost expired or expired, and he used them in his clinic, and it helped people mm -hmm. and saved lives. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about glasses. Glasses can be expensive. Um, we found that it used to be <laughs> years ago, you know, when you bought the glasses that were like uh, windshields on a car, you know, and had the windshield wipers on them. Um, we used to buy plastic frames just because they were lighter weight and they were more design -like. but plastic frames tend to break. Especially out here in Arizona where it's really dry. Right. And to go without your glasses, you know, when you've got a broken frame, that, that is just a crisis waiting to happen. <laughs> and it, it's a pain. So we recommend buying sturdy frames. Metal and frames. And usually we can get two or three sets of prescriptions out of a set of metal mm -hmm. frame glasses. We don't buy the ones with the strings underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 I don't know what you call it, but... Those tend to be a little flimsier, and they don't last as long. And if you have old glasses, they can be donated to... Lions Clubs. Lions Club. Right. But we found the best prices to be at Sam's Club and Costco. And they aren't paying us to say that, but no. we've, we've checked prices all around. Well, They're, but that's for progressive lenses. Yeah. So if you are single vision lenses, I'm sure there are other options mm -hmm. for that. But we're not in that category anymore. Yep, we are just too vain. <laughs> We're just too vain to wear bifocals. So okay. if I go like this, you know that's because I'm reading. <laughs> for those of you who have progressive lenses will understand that. Um, ask for discounts whenever you go in. If you're a, a AAA member, an ARP member, if you are a former military, 
ask for discounts, oftentimes you'll find that those work. Yes. Uh, by the way, at Sam's Club, you do not have to be a member to get glasses. Mm -hmm. At Costco, you do need to be a member to get glasses. I think they changed that. Costco? Yeah, I think there was a time when you did not. Yeah. And their reasoning, at least the Costco I went to, was that because you're buying something physical off the shelf, you have to be a member. I don't understand that. Yeah, but that's okay. I don't. Um, there are some online places we have been tempted to use them, and you measure your pupils and, and uh, look at the glasses ahead of time, and, and you order them online, and the prices are supposedly good, but we've always gone back to buying them in person at, mm -hmm. at our local store. Um, you can also, well, I had a thought about prescription drugs that fit that same, I lost it. Okay, maybe I'll come back. Mm. Um, okay. Anyway, okay. let's talk about let's talk about oh that the, you don't need that you don't oh, need a membership to go get a yes. prescription drug the prescription I, drugs at Costco and Sam's Club you do not need a okay. membership. All right, let's take a break before we move into medical equipment, durable medical equipment. Let's take a break and answer some questions. Okay. Um, do we need to refresh? Uh, oh, okay, these are, these are so comments. Laura's saying my meds I use are in U.S. dollars in U.S. dollars are forty dollars a pill. And I have to take four a day, and that's just one drug. Wow. That is costly. That is amazing. So, yeah, you do need to be aware of your health care and look at all your options and manage it well and be very knowledgeable, almost as knowledgeable okay. as the doctors. We just got another medical what? person's endorsement. Okay. What Our did good they friend say? Isabel from Portugal yes. says, great info. I used to be a doctor's assistant in Canada. In Canada. 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 Is he? That's awesome. So I knew a lot of this, but your information is wonderful. Thank you, Isabel. That's what we've heard. We've had, we spoke in California at a conference and one of the sessions was on medical and I had a nurse come up to me at the end and she said, you know, we have generations of medical people in my family and I've never heard anything like this. And I want to just tell you what you are sharing is right on. So I was like, yeah. Yes, that's awesome. Okay. Okay, let's go down Any here. Any more news? Um, okay, warnings. On, Andrea says, warnings on red rice yeast. It can mimic the effects of a statin drug, so be careful. Oh, interesting. Yep. Didn't know that. Yep. And okay. I, but I took it, and I never had the, the, the um, uh, cramping and, and muscle, uh, what do you want to call Soreness, it? Soreness, weakness? It was no muscle knots that I got from taking the statin drug. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everybody's body is different. Yes. And that's something that, that people often forget. So we've got to be aware of that and watch your body when you take a new medication yes. to see how it responds. Or your kids. Yes. If you give your kids a drug, watch how yes. they respond because they, they may not know right. that it's, it's wrong or something's right. happening. Um, Teresa, I'm glad you have progressive lenses. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Boy. So we got to move along. It's already seven thirty. We got to wrap this up. Woo! We aren't, okay. aren't going to do that because we are. We're going to finish with how we beat the common cold right. with some pretty uncommon methods and some very simple and well known products that are yes. not necessarily medically related. Yes. Okay. Well, let's talk about medical equipment savings. So. Three people in our family have had knee surgery. I had knee surgery back in 1980. I gave my knees to my daughters, and both of them had knee surgery, torn ACLs. And each time we learned a little more about how to get through it without spending a lot of money. So our daughter, Abby, was the first one up for knee surgery, and they said that she needed to buy a brace for a post-surgical brace, which was this really long thing, and I believe it cost $700 if you bought it from the medical supply company. Mm -hmm. We found one on Craigslist, asked the doctor if it would be okay to use it. He said, well, just clean it really good and bring it in a plastic bag so that they could have it in the operating room, but they mm -hmm. wanted to make sure it didn't have germs on it. Right. Oh, uh, no, it was Becky. Becky was the mm -hmm. first one. Mm -hmm. That was for Becky. And so we did, and we, I think we spent $50 on it. So that was like more than a 90% savings. So just know that some of that stuff can be bought used. Just check with your medical provider. Um, or oh, it was $700, dude. That's right. Um, ACL braces after surgery, the, the, uh, the ones that athletes wear, mm -hmm. um, those can be bought used. And there, there's a video on YouTube for how to fit it to your body. 
Now, the reason I say this is our second daughter, Abby, wanted a, a brace so she could continue playing volleyball after her ACL surgery, and it was expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, we ended up not buying a used one, but we met with a guy who, who gave us a discount on the brace, and he showed us how to fit it, and it was a phenomenal mm -hmm. view. It was an angel from heaven, mm -hmm. but it's still available right. today. You can find all kinds of braces. Do the research on what you should get. On talk eBay to, and Craigslist and offer talk to all your doctor, online platforms. And they'll usually help you find ways to save money. Right. Okay. How about uh, when, when my back was really hurting me after moving 30 tons of granite, I wanted to buy an inversion table. So I went on Craigslist and I knew what kind I wanted. It was a teeter inversion table. It was one of the better ones out there. Remember, we don't buy junk. We buy the best quality for the lowest price. We found it in, I can't remember if it was August or September. It was, it was July or August. It July was the middle August. of summer. And we got it for $60 instead of $200. And the guy even delivered it. It was used, but mm -hmm. slightly used. Oh, it was in great so, shape. So I used it for several months, but realized, and I used, did it over in our family room right around the corner from here. And um, it wasn't really revolutionizing my life. It was helping, but it was taking up a lot of space. So around December, I decided to sell it. Now, this is one of the advantages of, of buying used, is that in December, we turned around and we sold it for $100. Yes. Two weeks before Christmas, yeah. and someone was using it as a Christmas present. So it's okay. awesome. So if you need, okay, let's go to the next one. Thrift stores and hospice care stores. Hospice, let me, let me uh, jump in. Okay. So a lot of the hospice stores will have amazing equipment for you or your elderly people, your elderly relatives, parents, aunts, and uncles, we have found walkers, canes, boots, portable toilets, wheelchairs, shower chairs, crutches. walkers, crutches. Um, those can also be rented from senior centers. We have a senior center here that will rent those out like for six months for $5. So if you have, you know, needs for things like that, <clears throat> Uh, make sure you check hospice thrift stores and senior centers before you go spend, you know, whatever, several hundred dollars getting one for somebody in your family. And, of course, ask your friends because somebody may have one uh, where a relative passed away or something and it's sitting in their garage and they don't need it anymore and it could be available for you. Okay, we want to share something with you real quick before we move into dental care. We have an audio seminar called Money Smart Health and Medical Benefits. And it's really summing up a lot of what we're talking about today. And it's available in a, in a hard copy and, and in a digital copy from our website at moneysmartfamily.com. Also, our book, our first book, that's the New York Times bestseller, um, America's Cheapest Family Gets You Right on the Money. There's a medical chapter in here that's got a lot of great information. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, this could be a great place to start. And um, we're also, I'm also going to share. I'm going to give links to that in a minute. But okay. I'm just showing people where our, uh, they can see on the screen now, this is our store. And they can go in there and they can just add these things to the cart and purchase the book for $13.75 plus shipping. And they can purchase the audio. Just go to our store and they'll see all the products that we have. And they can go over and they can click on the medical and pick that up. And that one is available two ways as right. an audio CD mm -hmm. and as an instant download. And all they have to do is click right here right. and choose the option. So if they choose an instant download, they can add that to the cart. And it's $10.75. And this is an hour long, much more concise than what we're doing now. Right. Because we aren't going to ramble and read messages. Right, right. And, you know, if you have medical issues in your family, you really need to think about budgeting. Um, it's, it's January, almost February, it's the new year. Let's get it off to a good start and make sure that you know where all your money is going that's coming in and going out. You know, our budgeting system is a, a pen and paper one and I know there's tons of online options that you can choose from, but we don't have 12 bank accounts. We have two bank accounts. And we, we try to keep our finances simple and our budget categories are on separate pages. I like the pen and paper. Uh, we're traveling this next week. We're going to be speaking next weekend in South Carolina at Summerbrook Church in Somerville, South Carolina, which is near Charleston. And so I'm going to pull my budget pages out of my budget book, and I will be working on that while we're traveling, while we're driving in the car. We have a lot of drive mm -hmm. time. 
So I will be working on our next budget period and reconciling our budget. And um, we've done this for, gosh, 35 years, and that's how we're able to do what we can do because we've always used a budget. And how does that, what, what kind of things do we accomplish with that budget? We raised five kids. We've lived debt free, no matter what the economy is doing. Um, we have started our own business because we have used that budget. Um, there just hasn't been a lot of uh, emergencies financially for us because we've planned for so many things in our budget. Okay. okay I'm gonna give I'm gonna give some links here. So okay, I'm gonna wrap second. up with dental care. Dental care should not be neglected. There are free clinics around every large city. Um, dental schools, if you're willing to make a lot of trips and spend time, they'll give you dental care for 50% off. Sealants are the best investment for kids. The entire dental industry changed when they came up with sealants because all these kids did not have cavities because they ended up with sealants. Our kids have maybe one or two cavities in their mouths and they're 30 years old. I can't even tell you what my mouth looks like. Wait a second. Our kids are 30 years old? Yes. No. We have several that are around Oh, that my time. gosh. <laughs> I'm, have, I'm 30 for the second oh, time, very so funny. I don't know how Very funny. I don't know how that happened. Okay, also, this is a crazy thing, but the Delaney sisters that wrote the first, is, did, is their book called The First 100 Years? Yep. Um, they brushed with baking soda and or and salt or salt. Brush their teeth. I like using baking soda. It neutralizes the acids in my mouth, and I think it does a great job of keeping my teeth clean and healthy. When I went into the dentist after using baking soda, which the dentist was like, "Oh no, that's too abrasive. That's going to wreck your teeth," and I'm thinking, "No, it melts." And they it were still a mild they abrasive. were shocked at how little plaque I had on my teeth because I was using the baking soda. So also there's a little trick that you can use. If you don't have a lot of dental issues in your mouth, the trick is that you can go in for a cleaning. We don't do every six month cleanings. We go in for a cleaning and then you can go in 11 months later for a cleaning and not have to pay for x-rays again. Mm -hmm. So that's another way that you can save money and still get good dental care for your teeth. Um, because both of us did not have good dental care when we were young in our families. We are, you know, experiencing a lot of some of those difficult things in our mouth now with getting crowns. And we're grateful that we have an HSA. We talked about that last week. We could put money in the HSA tax free and use that to pay for some of our and medical also needs. Have a dentist yes. who gives us a cash discount. Yes. He also gives us a discount if we take a last minute appointment. Or not using insurance because we don't have yeah. dental and insurance. That's kind of the same thing as cash, isn't it? Uh, no. Discounts. No. It, and he doesn't do the last minute dental appointments not anymore. Okay. So he'll give us a cash discount if we pay like buy a check rather than a credit card, and then he'll give us a discount oh, that's right. because he doesn't have to file all the insurance and papers mm -hmm. because we don't have dental insurance. Right. So, so you okay. just go in and negotiate with your service providers, your medical providers, and see if they'll give you some discounts. Okay. And especially if they're not having to file insurance. And look for a dentist that like has won awards or um, you know is highly rated because it is a scam. I knew somebody... Not all. No, that, it can be a scam. Be. I, there was, I think it was Consumer Reports wrote an article on dentistry, and they went to three different dentists, and every dentist had um, a different thing that they wanted to, to do. To, yeah, that they wanted to do to their mouth. So we have found an honest dentist, and um, I'm grateful. Okay. Um, let's take a break for a second. Yes. We need to talk about this, because this was a great deal. Oh, okay. So before we get to the end, we are um, a Zaycon Foods uh, influencer, and... Zaycon Foods. What is Zaycon Foods? Zaycon's Fresh Foods sells meat in bulk. So we have a blog buying meat in bulk. And today only, for new people that sign up, go to our blog. You can sign up on the link on our blog. You won't you, believe this deal. Yeah. Right. And, it's and we, 99 <laughs> cents for boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You can go to Zaycon's website, see where the pickup places are in your area. And um, you can order one case at that price, which is, which is 40 pounds, pounds and split you can, you can split it or share it if you need to, 
Uh, if you have a freezer, obviously you can package it into smaller zippered frozen freezer zipper bags when you get home and put it in the freezer. But it is a phenomenal deal. Now, who and do you know that bought this? We bought it. That's right. Yes. We bought it. We bought a case. And we and thought it was only it was only available on Wednesday of this week, but we no, just it was, got it. It was. It was Wednesday, wasn't it? Wednesday. We did it late at night. The first thing in the morning, we did it Thursday morning. Thursday, Thursday yesterday, morning, yesterday, and it was so popular they did it again. But it's for new people, and you need. I put a code in the blog. Right. If you're gonna go to Zaycom Foods. And you could go through our link. We would be grateful. Wait, and there's I a special the code on? in the blog. Oh, I got to give you the code. Here no. comes the code. Really? Okay. Right here. I forgot to put that in the notes. Oh, my god. No, that's goodness. okay. Because if they click through on our blog, they'll the, get the that. Note, the code is not there. Yeah, it is. I put it in today. Oh, you put it in. You I put thinking. it in today. Here's the Zacon code there. And I'm going to put it up on YouTube. So yes. Facebook, you have the code, and it's and, uh, and it's good till tonight. Uh, so unless they run out, unless they run out. Yeah. So if, if you you know, I'm not going to buy from Zacon every month. And if you're a real bargain shopper with your meat, this may not be for you. But if you have time, if you struggle with time and feeding your family, this could be a great option. And when we get our Zacon chicken box, I am going to show like a once a month bulk cooking day and what I do with all that right. chicken. Now, the thing with Zaycom is they don't you don't order it now and pick it up tomorrow. Right. It's, you order it now and it picks up in March. So it, it comes in months later. But but all of their products are like that. So if you get on a regular schedule Yes, they have every kind of meat, but not every meat is available. Every kind of meat is available every month. Right. So um you may want to think about that and if you especially if it's in your area. Okay, we need to fly because we got some at, other questions here. Oh Let's, gosh, we're at seventy five minutes I mean, already. It's, it's a seventy five minutes? I no, mean forty five. Forty five minutes. Okay. I figured we were gonna go an hour. All right. Um Okay, what about blood pressure machines? I had to buy mine a few years ago. Insurance wouldn't accept. Thank God I had an E B coupon from CBS. Okay. We bought a blood we pressure bought machine a, on, uh, on eBay. And it was a fraction of what it cost. Yeah. And um, once again, it was a... I think it cost about $10. Something ridiculous. It's an Aeron, Aer it's, it's an automated, it's it's all digital. And um, and really, it was um, a child whose parent had passed away, and they had the blood pressure machine, and so they were selling it. Uh -oh. So The three-book deal gave an error message. I have to check that out. Okay. All right, so I'll keep going. Okay, let's quickly talk about how to cure a cold in a couple of days. Well, a lot of times you're going to end up with a sore throat um, first. And so at the first sign as of a tickle in our throat, we've done, oh gosh, any number of these things. Obviously, warm salt water, a high, Here, wait. I'm gonna high demonstrate. density of salt water. I'm going to demonstrate a teaspoon of salt and about a cup of water. And you go like this and you stir it around. And heat it up. And you heat it up. And then when you gargle... You have to make sure you're not going to from do experience. This. You're not going to do that. You don't laugh. Oh, 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 oh no, dear! <laughs> really? Oh gosh! Don't be ridiculous. Hey, but one time I was demonstrating to the kids how to gargle, <laughs> and we was in the bathroom, and Becky got me laughing so hard <laughs> that I sprayed this stuff all over the mirror. Yep. So. You probably ought to wear safety goggles. Uh, someone rec safety goggles. Oh, when you please! Yeah. Somebody <laughs> recommended to me um, fix that real quick so we can get back to uh, our. It, news it feed. actually worked, but I I will go and put another one up just so that people. Okay. Can um, apple cider vinegar was my newest thing, and it's one a one to four ratio. So I did uh, one ounce of apple cider vinegar and four ounces of water. And I gargled with that, and wow, did that kick the heck out of what was in my throat. Also, an old remedy, honey, lemon, and whiskey, and it's equal parts. So it would be half an ounce of honey, half an ounce of lemon, and half an ounce of whiskey. Whiskey. And, you like that and one. And Steve has, <laughs> Steve has done colloidal silver for a gargle. Um, I like to use it more as mixing it with lotion and putting it on my face. But there's a lot of things that you can do for a cold, a mm -hmm. flu, well, or a sore throat. That's just for your sore throat. Right. Um, the also, thing, hold on. If you if your sore throat, and your irritated throat is caused by a nasal drip, mm -hmm. then you've got to do something besides taking all these herbs. I know this is crazy. No one's paying us to say this, but I like Walmart's Mucus Buster. 
and they have been out of it for the last, the shelf has been empty for the last week. So they you can't, know it works. They can't keep up with the demand right now. So they said they were getting, in our area, they were getting another shipment in. It wasn't coming in until February 5th. That is insane. So don't be without it. Buy it over the summer so you have it in the house. No, okay, so here's when, what happens. If you have post-nasal drip, mm -hmm. it drains down your throat, irritates your throat, and it, it also probably has some type of bacteria or a virus in it. And so you end up with even worse sore throat, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's just not good. So if you can cut down the mucus draining, right. you can get healthy faster. Okay, let's go. Now, I'm going to share a link where we, we wrote this post out, and all the details we're sharing are on this post. We really got to hurry. Okay. And I will share the link, and then we can keep going. But you really want to read this post, It's and you're probably going to want to share it with friends because it's got some amazing information. And we're going to share the secret thing that I put on my feet last night. Okay. Got rid of the little tickle in my throat. So if you have a cold flu or sore throat, coat your feet. Now, the don't, bottom don't, of your feet. Don't put a coat on your feet. But <laughs> coat your feet. And this is the cheapest way... And one of the most effective ways... Oh, we didn't bring the... Um, what? The essential oil. Oh, that's all right. We'll, we'll describe it. Okay. Do we have it? Yes, we do. Where? Well, we, we have tea tree oil. Look at this. This is an old bottle of generic vaporizing chest rub. You know what this contains? It contains camphor, which is made from the bark of a tree. Um, it contains um, eucalyptus, menthol all of which are cough suppressants and they're topical analgesics and you put these this on your feet at night and I usually put slippers next to my bed so if I get out of bed I don't end up getting it on the carpeting in our room um, you can put a sock or socks on like your feet peds you on want. your feet yeah. or I I don't like peds when I sleep so I put my flip-flops right next to my bed because my flip-flops are plastic so if I have to get out of the bed to go potty in the middle of the night I just slip my feet into that and go potty. But usually, the bottom in the wintertime, my feet absorb yeah. that by, stuff. By morning, you won't have anything left. Right. But the point is, you will feel amazingly better mm -hmm. just by doing this. And apply it liberally, but not to the point where it's just... And that's available at all drugstores yeah, and discount retailers. It's probably about a dollar. And this also, the dollar stores have it. So make sure that this is, this is like a must-have. And if you've got somebody that's coughing really bad... Did you say you can put it on your chest? Yes, you can put it on your chest. And I your back? I always rub the excess on yes. my throat, too. Yep. Okay. Okay, so let's go. Now, this is another one. and We started actually doing Eve's oil uh -huh. before we learned about, about Vicks Vapor Rub. I think they're about as effective, but Thieves smells better. Um, and we get that from I Rocky. I think Thieves is more effective, yeah. actually. Well, it, and it, it, it may be. Um, I, I haven't done a comparison test. But we get our oils... Uh, from Rocky, Rocky Mountain, Mountain oils. oils, and I like our daughter them. Becky has checked them out. Yes, she checked, compared them with other other we multi level. We're not going to say the name. This isn't okay. a, this isn't multi level. No, it's not multi level marketing, and we really like their products and their prices, and we like that they're not multi level marketing. So if you've never checked out Rocky Mountain oils for essential oils, you may want to do that, and we're going to give you again our affiliate link. And so if you're interested, please click through on that. That helps us, and um, it'll help you as well. It won't affect anything you do. Any of your, any of your costs. Any of your but costs. Rocky Mountain Oil sells all kinds of oils. Yes, they do. Uh, another oil we're going to talk about is tea tree oil, and that's uh, phenomenal stuff. Okay. okay. What about vitamin C? Now, the, the jury is still out on whether vitamin C is effective or not, but we use it. Uh, you know, we, we have a citrus orchard, so we eat a lot of citrus in the wintertime, too. And I can just feel that coat in my throat, and it helps me feel better. But uh, if you want to buy vitamin C or any of the other herbs that we're going to talk about, um, we use Puritan's Pride. And we usually put in two orders a year. Yes. And we'll spend between, I don't know, 100 and $200 each time. And we get our vitamin supplements. I buy my niacin from there. Um, we buy... Uh, all the, the oh, herbs and all stuff the, we're going to talk the about here. All the normal A's, B's, C's, D's, uh, uh, E's. I, well, I, take, I decided I got tired of taking all these little individual pills, so I did some research, and I'm taking a um, What's it ultra, called? Ultra Ultraman. Because you are the Ultraman. Oh, Ultraman vitamin. Okay. <laughs> and it's just, you know, I, I figured I'm eating healthy, so 
I don't need to take all these individual supplements and get it out of balance. So I took one multivitamin and it seems to be working really good. But some of the some of the herbs that we use are echinacea with golden seal, cat's claw, pau diarco. They're all supposedly antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. Um, and once again, our favorite company that we order from is Puritan's Pride, and they have a special right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve did you, is going to put the up code here. up. Okay. You get $7 off, off if you order $40 or more. And oftentimes. And you get, hold on, and you get their buy two, get three free as well. Or is it buy one, get two free? I can't no, right now it's buy two, get three free, and you get free shipping if you order $49 or more, which is very easy to do. Um, so, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Um, you may have thought when Steve named the numbers of how much we spent on herbs and vitamins that it was high, but what I do now is I give the kids bottles of herbs. When they all left home, they each got a box fully loaded with a, a bottle of all the herbs and they have come back to us asking us for more herbs when they get sick. I think we need to let them buy them. So <laughs> no, well, so for Becky kind of does, but now for Christmas, uh, we have one of our kids that shall remain nameless um, that, um, you know, money is tight. And so we will give them one of each bottle of the herbs and that a box mm -hmm. of herbs and vitamins for Christmas. And that'll be one of their Christmas presents. Okay. So we take vitamin C and we'll, Annette likes to do the chewable. I mm -hmm. kind of have the impression that I don't want that much acid in my mouth and my teeth. So I'll take the regular pills. But you take three or four, three or four times a day, 500 to 1,000 milligrams. And you, the indication that your body has had enough is that you get very loose stools. Right, right. Uh, we won't go any further. Okay. okay. Echinacea with golden seal. We take that whenever we get sick. So I already talked the, about all of these. The next two, Echinacea, Cat's Claw, and Powder yep, are our three go-to. Okay. Now, and here are links to for those. Okay. Now, one last thing I want to share that we discovered in the last year while we were traveling. Somebody on a plane oh, said this is that worth a million dollars. She right does here. this and she never gets sick on a plane. And this is the first year I can remember in a very long time that I did not get sick during the holiday season. What she does is she finds a, a tube of triple antibiotic ointment. And I have found those at the dollar store. And she takes a Q-tip, puts some of the ointment on the Q-tip, rolls it around inside her nose. Hmm. And so for all the rehearsals and the performances, where I sang this this last year, um, I did not get sick. And you're uh, singing with a group of about 120 well, people? Well, there, there weren't always that many. But on there, there's a yeah. lot of people. And think about this, being in a room with all these people breathing in and then right. singing and coughing. Right. And, okay, we, and they regularly get sick. And she didn't get sick until after, after the last concert. It was crazy. Second so, week of January. So those, okay. let's wrap this up. Those are our tips. The yes. article is much longer than yes. what we covered. So please go in and read it, yes. like it, share it. Um, it's it's. I'll tell you, it's going to save right. your. Health. And once again, here is the audio seminar on money smart health and medical benefits. And if you've got our first book, which many of you do, there's a chapter in medical. So bone up on that chapter. Read that chapter again. Okay. And at the end of this blog article that I'm going to share. There's a doctor who wrote in unsolicited to us um, and told us what he thought about the information we shared. And we were also speaking at a conference in Indiana, and we had a dentist come up to us after we did a section on this. And he said, everything you said was right on with the, oh, no, he read our book. Yes. He read our book. And he said, but you're missing information on dental. And that's right. why we've added this to right, our speech. Right, right. Um, okay. we, we we love uh, connecting with you guys. Yes. Um, Thank you for joining please, us tonight. Please share this broadcast if you think it'd be helpful yes. to anybody. If you're on YouTube or if you aren't on YouTube but would like to be, uh, I'm going to give you a link to subscribe to our channel because we are trying to build our subscribers. And if you subscribe and click the little bell for notifications, you'll find out whenever we post a new video. Yes. And uh, we are getting ready to do one on... Um, the best beef stew ever. Oh, yeah. And it was really good. So that one will be up in the next few days. Uh, we are posting another one on happy hour deals at Sonic Drive-In. I'm not yeah. going to tell you what they are, but we do have a post on our website about that. Uh, and they're really good deals. Okay. So thank you for joining us. Next week we will be in um, Somerville, South Carolina, speaking at Summerbrook Church. And maybe we can jump on for a little we'll bit. We'll try and do something. We'll try to jump on to our Friday night session. 
so you can hear a little, at least a little bit of it. Now, if any of you are in Arizona, yes, and you're not busy tomorrow morning, yes. at eight thirty, raise your hand. <laughs> I can't see your hand. We're doing the Financial Hope Seminar with two other speakers. Bob Blader, who does financially free seminars, and Linda Hammond, who is the garage sale gal. She's giving away some of her garage sale deals. And we're, there's a ton of giveaways for tomorrow morning. Plus, if you are going as a result of hearing us here, we're going to give you a free item for coming, which is either one of our value. yeah, either our web membership at $20 or one of our digital or, downloads. Yeah, you know, they could yeah. come to the seminar and they could get this digital download yes, they of could. this for free. So if you are in Arizona or you know anybody that's in Arizona, we would love to see you and chat with you tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next week. It's Annette and Steve from... Money Eat. smart family from eat food. Eat. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, it's this Annette is and Annette. <laughs> it's Steve. Annette and Steve. Economy is from, from money, money smart, smart family. family. Money dot smart com. family. It was great money being with you. We'll family. see you next time. Money bye smart bye. Family. Money smart family. Money smart family. I'm going to keep saying that because I have brain uh, something wrong with my head. Okay, uh, we're ending the broadcast. We'll see you bye. all next week.